you again for tuning in to my web blog. I want to thank you and um, we're going to be doing part two of Climb Higher in Prayer. So let's go ahead and get started. It was wonderful uh, to, to basically just talk about the vision that the Lord had given to me. And uh, now we got the thoughts marinated. Let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your goodness, for they endureth forever. Right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over this conversation, over every individual that will tune in, Lord God, and watch this web blog. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name for a spirit of revelation and understanding. I pray, Lord God, that your spirit would quicken and let the Holy Ghost perform a mighty work now. I release it. Hallelujah. I feel your anointing already, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that these would be prophetic words, Lord God, spoken to the body. I pray in the name of Jesus, let everyone be blessed. Let everyone be touched and ministered to right now in Jesus' name. So let's continue. As I said we had to climb, we have to put forth that effort in prayer. So for us as New Testament believers, those that actually have the privilege to know His name. And I'm not talking about Jehovah Jireh. I'm not talking about Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Shalom. And all those other names that God just continued to reveal Himself. I'm talking about the New Testament name. The New Covenant name. The name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. We who have that privilege to know God. And to know his name. Praise God. Look, Jesus died for us. He hung on that cross for us. He was buried for three days. Praise God. And he rose again. Praise the Lord. Defeating all the power of death, sin, and the grave. Devil, you have nothing on us as believers. In Jesus' name, praise God, Hallelujah. We need to have a ha we need to have a hunger for God, Amen. We need to have a hunger for Jesus Christ. Look, He is the bread of life. He is the manna that fell from heaven. Everything about Jesus is miraculous. Everything about Jesus is supernatural. I know he was a human being, but if you strip that human body away, you would have, hallelujah, the spirit of the almighty, all-powerful God. Hallelujah. That's who Jesus is. That's who Jesus housed in his body was the everlasting father, the mighty God. Hallelujah. That wonderful counselor, even that prince of peace. Praise the Lord. And we have to have that hunger to know who God is. Praise God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. We have to have that hunger to see God. Hallelujah. Jesus, I want to see your face. Hallelujah. Come on. It's an honest, sincere prayer. Let you become so real to me. In the name of Jesus, give me open vision that I can see your face. Hallelujah. It's all right. It's all right to ask God for these things. We need to be hungry for it. Amen. And I believe by the authority of the Word of God and in the power of the name of Jesus Christ, that we will see His face before the rapture takes place. Amen. Look, He proved Himself alive. He proved Himself alive. 
It's unbelievable at first, but I believe. That's how, it, that's how it's got to be. It was unbelievable for his disciples at first, but he proved himself alive. First, he revealed himself to Mary Magdalene. He, Mary Magdalene tried to tell all the disciples that, hey, he is risen, praise the Lord, but they would not believe him. He revealed himself to his disciples by showing them his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Look that up in John chapter 20, verse 20. Hallelujah. How fitting it is that when they saw the Lord, praise God, they were glad. 2020 means perfect vision. So I guess when you see the Lord, hallelujah, yeah, it's all right to be glad when you see the Lord because it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. But I also want you to take a look at John chapter uh, 20, verse 19. Notice that the disciples were there and the door was shut. It kind of reminds me of Matthew 6 and 6, when the Lord teaches us to pray. He says, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father with, which see, which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Amen. Come on, somebody. Ask for proof. Come on. Ask God for proof. Don't be ashamed. Follow the pattern that the scripture lays out for us that men and women of God who walk with God follow their pattern. Amen. In John 20 and 24, we're reading on down, but Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. My Lord, have mercy. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let, let's stop right here. In verse 25, look here. Thomas is, is basically, he's hearing their confession. The, the, the disciples have said, we have seen the Lord. We've seen him. But Thomas does not believe him because he's seen the death. Of Jesus he's seen when when he got nailed to the when he got nailed to the cross praise God he's seen when that soldier thrusted that spear into his side and water and blood came out he's seen it praise God why would he if he didn't see it why in the world would he say except I see the prints of the nails and put my finger where those were, and, and, and shove my hand, or thrust my hand, where, where his side was, was, was pierced. I will not believe. Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. After, verse 26, after eight days, so, wait up, hang on, so it's okay. Come on, somebody. It's okay to ask God to prove himself. You do not insult God. By asking him, Lord, show up in my life. Lord, I need proof of you. Now come on. I'm going to stretch your faith out a little bit. Amen. Praise God. We're going to keep going. And after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. Look at that. Amen. The doors were shut again. The doors being shut 
And <clears throat> then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. The reason why he said, Peace be unto you, because he instantly appeared in front of them. And if somebody just instantly appears in front of you, you're going to be freaked out, man. You're going to be... <laughs> You're going to be like, oh my goodness, you know what I mean? Hallelujah. That's why he said, peace be unto you. Then say he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless. I want to stop right there. Look, he came specifically for Thomas and he came for Thomas's request. That, that, the, the disciples told Thomas, Amen, we have seen the Lord. He is risen. Thomas said, unless I see the, the nail prints for myself, unless I put my fingers there, unless I put my, my, put, put my hand through his side, I'm not going to believe it for myself. But Jesus says, look, here, do all those things that you done asked for eight days ago. And be not faithless. And the reason why he says that is because later on in scriptures you read that faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Mm. Praise the Lord. Now the disciples tried to tell Thomas. Look man, we've seen the Lord. And so they're giving him testimony. They're giving him a report. But Thomas was unbelieving. But he was still bold enough to say why he didn't believe. And unless God shows me himself and I get to experience God for myself, I am not going to believe. Praise the Lord. Verse 28. Verse 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Not because he heard the disciples' testimony, huh. but because he got to see with his own eyes. He got to touch. He got to feel. Praise God. He got to experience for himself the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, my Lord and my God. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Now look, I know what the next verse says. Come on, you, you're going to try to tell me, Brother Bryant, read a little bit further. The next verse says, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Look, I know that th that is the generation in which uh, we are living in right now. Uh, uh, we are living in that generation. That we're, we're unable to see Jesus walk in his earthly ministry. We're unable to share with the original apostles and original disciples. Praise God. And he's saying, blessed are they that have not seen me yet believe. Blessed are they that have not seen me work those miracles and yet believe. Blessed are they. Praise God. But he did not say that you could not pray, God appeared to me. Jesus appeared to me. Jesus show up in my life. Hallelujah, praise God. Come on, somebody. Let's climb higher in God. Let's be bolder with our prayer request with God. Let's not insult Him by keeping Him in some kind of box in the name of Jesus. Let's be bold with our prayer requests unto God. Let's climb higher in God. Amen? Praise God. I think I'm going to have to... Uh, do a part three of this. Praise the Lord. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. And uh, thank you all. Thank you again for your time.
and uh, just being able to watch this uh, video blog, I pray that it blesses you. And now, now let's let's go into prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I take dominion over every spirit. Lord, in the name of Jesus, human and the, and demonic that is against the kingdom of Jesus Christ, I bind right now. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I loose, Lord God, your kingdom, your power, your revelation. You, Jesus, into the hearts and into the minds and into the lives of your honest and sincere believers. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the anointing right now to destroy every yoke. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's do a quick exercise in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. If I could go ahead and get all of you guys to close your eyes, I want to pray. Hallelujah. Prophetic prayer over you. In the name of Jesus, right now, as your eyes are closed, and peace of Jesus Christ is coming over you. I want you to visualize right now a hilltop, a hillside. And on this hillside there is a tree. I believe it's an apple tree. It's a tree that will produce shade. And there under the tree is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is there, and he has got his shepherd's staff, his shepherd's rod with him. Hallelujah. And underneath that tree, there is one sheep. Praise God. And that one sheep, that is you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is stooping down right now to pick you up and to embrace you in his arms. And right now, in Jesus' name, I pray that you feel his embrace and his love flowing to you now. Let every hurt be washed away by the power of his love for you. In the name of Jesus, let him comfort you. Let Jesus love you. Peace be unto you. In Jesus' name. Thank you very much for tuning in again and watching this uh, part two of Climbing Higher in Prayer. God bless you.